and also far out things. Uh, what I, I, I don't, A, dismiss them, unless through previous research I know them to be not true. And B, I don't accept them either. I put them on the back burner and I wait and I see what other information comes in relation to that subject. And then there comes a point. This is what I did with the paedophiles. I, I got so much information about this stuff um, in, um, in the 90s. Um, and eventually there comes a point where you cross a line. You've got so many stories telling you the same things about the same people from so many different sources who are not connected that you cross the line. And at that point, you say, I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. um, and it, 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 well, it's turned out to be true. Have you ever sort of, um, I'd imagine you've come into a few scenarios where you sort of fear for your life or sort of ever been worried? No. Never. You've never thought, I am coming out with so much, like you say, fantastical stuff that... I'm, you know, the hotel I go to tonight. Right. You know. No, never. Um, and people say, do you have a bodyguard? Um, you, you know what a bodyguard is? He doesn't. Is? You know what a bodyguard is? A it, witness. It, it, it is an external acceptance. Right. That other people have power over you. I don't accept that. That's why I don't have a bodyguard. I don't. Hey, well, you don't bloody need one. <laughs> size of you. Although if you, if you do need one. Yeah. Maybe me. Bloody good break. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. But I know what you're saying, though. You, but, you don't want to give them that power. No, I, I won't give them the power. Um, they, can't, they cannot stop me. You see, we are consciousness, um, and, 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 and we can tap into expanded and expanded levels of consciousness mm -hmm. um, that give us enormous power to do in, enormous things, which gives us enormous levels of potential to make things happen. So how have you... Have you do you meditate? Or no, no, I just, just live my life knowing that I have more power than they do. Um, and uh, you see, if you look at how this cabal works, it works on intimidation and it works, intimidation is another word of saying, getting people to give a shit, right? Mm -hmm. It's about persuading the public to give their power away to them. They give their power away at different levels to politicians, you know, do something instead of saying, what am I going to do about it? It's what they're going to do about it. Uh, and, and then they give their power away through consequences. Right. Like, what will this cabal do to me if I come out with this stuff? I mean, so many people have given me information, some of them well-known people, and they've said, look, I'll give, you, I'll give you it, mate, but for God's sake, don't say you got it for me. It's this fear. I write an enormous amount about the nature of reality and the nature of life and the nature of the eye. And um, we, this body is just a vehicle for a very transitory experience in a tiny band of frequencies that we call the world. And, um, and, and when it's over, the true I, consciousness, awareness, will leave and explore forever, forever somewhere else. So when you, 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 you see life through that infinite, on that infinite level, then this little transitory experience we call a human life, it takes on a very different, um, a very different perception. For instance, um, well, they might kill you. Okay. So I'm not going to do what I know to be right because they might kill me. Okay. What does that mean? I am going to leave this body at some point anyway. So I'm not going to do what I know to be right out of fear of leaving the body just a bit earlier than I normally would. No, I think I could handle that. I've, right. always, I've always liked that about you, that you sort of viewed life in terms of perspective and time that we're here uh the way i do that's the one thing i've always identified with you and i, I sort of wondered if you'd ever um maybe lost someone earlier in life that taught you that it, this is all temporary no um it's um i've always rejected religion and i've always rejected okay. this world is all there is life's a bitch and then you die science mm -hmm. um but I, until i had my awakening shall we say in 1990 i never really explored you know the alternative and then a series of incredible paranormal experiences over a long period of time put this information in front of me um and um i tell i tell you a, a, a quick story um when i was writing um alice in wonderland the world trade center disaster i was saying to people you know, if, if I'm going to get to another level of understanding of what the hell's going on, I'm going to have to get out there and see this reality in a, from another perspective. 
uh, not in some dream where you wake up and you think, you know, was that real or was it a dream? But actually where I consciously see it. About the same time, I got an invite to go to Brazil, the Brazilian rainforest, 2003 this is, and, um, and partake of something called ayahuasca, mm. as well as talking to a, to a group. It was over a week. And I could have taken this ayahuasca four times. It's a rainforest plant. I took it twice. I had the most extraordinary experience. Some people have bad experiences, by the way. Um, but uh, particularly on the second night, um, what, it, it tastes like licorice. And, and you, you take it, and then it takes about an hour to kick in. And what happens is um, when you close your eyes, you're in another reality. But when you open your eyes, you're back in this one. The thing is, though, that your eyes don't want to stay open. So they keep shutting. And what happened in, uh, in, in, in that five hours is as it kicked in, this female voice, as loud as mine is now, started to explain the nature of physical reality and how it's all an illusion, a holographic, illusory physical illusion, and how it's just basically an experience and we are consciousness and the consciousness is eternal, it's indestructible, it just goes on. Um, anyway, and loads and loads and loads of other things. Um, and uh, I came back to Britain and I started researching mainstream science and quantum physics. And I found that science had sussed what this voice had told me. But because they operate in disciplines instead of the whole, they were all in different parts. And when you put the parts together, mm -hmm. the, the evidence is already there in this world that this is a, 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 an illusion. And so, it transformed my, well, it transformed everything. Because, you know, most people, and the, the system does this on purpose. I've written at length about this, how the system does it from cradle to grave. From, from cradle to grave, a human life is a download of perceptional programming. That's what it is. Um, the education system is simply downloading to um, the, the, the young population a perception of reality. And they test you if you've accepted that level of reality, nature of reality, by uh, exams. And then the media is pounding out the same version of reality. Mainstream science and mainstream medicine is pounding out the same uh, 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 reality. And as long as you keep paying your taxes and turning off yeah, work. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's based on what I call the postage stamp consensus. This is a narrow band of information, sense of the possible, what is known as the normal. And if you stay on the normal, then you're normal, you're credible, you are. Anyone that steps off the postage stamp wanting to explore other areas, well, they're the mad people and the weird people and the ridicule and dangerous and all that stuff. And it just kind of happened to me. I, I stepped off the postage stamp in 1990, 91, and I'm still running, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm away from it, like. Um, and you start to, 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 to realize that what the system does it doesn't want us to understand the true nature of the eye. Doesn't. Because I talk from my own experience. Once you know the true nature of the eye, what I am is consciousness. What I am is awareness. Forget the body, forget form. I am a state of being aware. And I can choose to be that aware. I'm just little me. I have no power. What can I do? Or we can choose to be as aware as we uh, want to be that is to self-identify with the body it wants it wants us to self-identify the i with my name my race my sex uh, and sexuality uh and all these labels attachment i feel yeah, is these, what they want to be attached to all yeah, these little things these labels they're labels um uh, and and these um, labels that people self-identify with when you say who are you they'll reel off their labels of the, this world labels then they, 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 they are not who we are they are what we are experiencing and what's experiencing uh, uh, those uh, lives those situations those labels is the true I consciousness now if you self-identify with the labels and by the way of course the labels and it's systematic 
are getting subdivided and subdivided and subdivided. I mean, how long is that bloody list of letters going to get? Where people have to are so obsessed with their self identity, they have to they have to list labels that that describe their self identity in the minute. They their bloody, diet in their Instagram bio yeah, at this point. Like, it's, it's unbelievable. Ridiculous. Do you know? I, 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 King. I, I, I quoted in one of the books um, a, a an identity list of letters that are used by an American university. You know, of, of self identities. It goes on for freaking ever. Um, so. When you uh, self-identify with your label, a as opposed to that being your experience, your sense of self and possibility contract to that label. I call them I am ours. I am our man. I am our woman. I am our this race or that race. But when you self-identify with being the consciousness that's having the experience, the consciousness that moves on at what we call death, then your sense of self, your sense of power, your sense of potential absolutely explodes. And life becomes much more of an adventure. You chill more because you know it's just a temporary experience on, on the road of forever. Whereas, you know, if you self-identify with the labels, it's like a bloody race. I gotta, 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 gotta. Because take it too seriously. It's, the, it's the three score years and ten, isn't it? Do you know whether you remember this advert? Um, I, it obviously wasn't a good advert, but because I can't remember what it was for, but, but it was a brilliant concept. It starts with this baby being born at this end of the, 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 the screen. And then it flies through the air like a missile. And as it's moving, it's getting older and older and older and older and older and, older and then slams into a grave at the other end. And that's basically what uh, a human life is like in many ways. The idea, I mean, the number of times you meet people and they're in retirement and, and they look back at their career, gotta, 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 strive, strive, strive. And they go, at that point, when they're coming to the end of their life, what was it all about? Why did I do that? What was the point? Mm. The trick is seeing that. Early before enough. you do it. Uh -huh. And it doesn't mean you just, you know, smoke weed and play the sitar. Oh, that is, that is very fun. I've <laughs> yeah. tried that before. You love playing <laughs> you go, the sitar. It, it, instead, it, it opens up a great vista of possibility. And, and you start to realize this. And this is how it works. And when you talk about solutions, this is the area of solutions. Imagine um, Wi-Fi and a, a computer. Um, you've got a Wi-Fi field, which is information in a radiation field, and it takes a certain, that form. The computer locks into that field, depending how it's encoded and where the mouse takes it, it, it locks into this part of the field or that part of the field or that part of the field, and depending what it locks into, it decodes that onto the screen. Mm. And, and, and people say, um, you, said to, you say to people, um, describe the internet to me. They'd say, well, it's graphics and moving pictures and words on a screen. Yes, it is, but only on the screen. Mm. That's the only place the internet exists in that form. Everywhere else, it's Wi-Fi radiation fields and electronic codes, etc. And the human, the human body is, it, it's the same principle. We have what I call cosmic Wi-Fi, a more technical way of describing it is the quantum field of possibility and probability. Just imagine it as a Wi-Fi field. This, as I've been calling it for decades, is a biological computer. And what if you, uh, this Wi-Fi field, it's information in waveform. Now look, look how the uh, five senses work. The five senses and the ears are classic with sound waves. It takes waveform information, it turns it into electrical information, it communicates it to the brain, and the brain decodes it into holographic digital information. And that holographic digital information is this world we experience as outside of us. It's not outside of us, it's in here. Just as the internet is inside the computer, we just observe it on the, the screen. So um, what you do when you're on a computer you are making decisions through your perceptions of where you want to go on the internet. So you are, by where you go, dictating what goes on the screen. 
our perceptions work exactly the same. Um, everything that we think, every thought, every emotional state is broadcast as a frequency. Everything's a frequency. Hate is a certain frequency. Love is a very different frequency. Uh, depression is one frequency. And you know, when, when people are, are in states of depression and anxiety, what do they say? Oh, I feel so heavy today. Why? Because those frequencies are very low and slow and their energetic field starts to vibrate very slowly and it enters a a much more dense state and we feel it as I'm feeling heavy today and then one day we wake up we've got we're full of joy and what do people say oh I feel so light today because the the the, the positive uh, emotions and thoughts of of love of joy are very f uh, fast frequencies and therefore you feel light you literally do so our perceptions whether we believe ourselves to be little me or infinite me, they are vastly different frequencies, bands of frequency. So if you're in a perception of I'm little me, I have no power, then you are broadcasting, operating on a very narrow band and low frequency band of perception mm -hmm. and that is interacting with the cosmic wi-fi the quantum field of possibility and probability within that band and you will create a feedback loop in which you will experience your own perceptions little me perception becomes little me lie